Hey, it's Bobby here, and I'm going to work with you. Actually, I'm going to break one of my own rules in dealing with this uh, soft lofted pitch from short distances. This is the last um, <clears throat> video that I'm going to shoot for this season here at the West, and I've certainly enjoyed it. And, and uh, as always, I'm happy to get all the feedback. It's a lot of fun. And then when some of you show up from all these distant shores to take part in our uh, golf academy, it's even more rewarding. But as I say, I'm going to break one of my own rules. What is that rule? Well. I'm going to give you more information about how to hit this soft lofted pitch than I think you can turn into repeatable motion in an instant. In other words, uh, there's only we all have a, a capacity. Actually, I'll tell you what, this is the last video. Let's have a little bit of fun. Let's talk about capacity for a minute because this is such a broad thing that has to do with every aspect of the game that uh, you have every right to understand its effect on the learning process. Take your right hand wherever you are right now, where you stand or sit, and, and move it clockwise right in front of you. Now. You've done that clockwise. Now take your right foot, that was the right hand, now it's the right foot, and move it counterclockwise. All right? Now do them both at the same time. It's impossible, right? Now, before you think you're clumsy and uncoordinated, let's do it a little differently. Take your right hand once again and go clockwise. Now this time take your left foot, now it was right hand, but it's left foot, and move it counterclockwise. Now do those, both of those at the same time. It's no problem, is it? Now why is that? And what does that have to do with the learning process? Well. It has to do with our capacity to take in information and turn it into repeatable motion. And what I mean is you have two hemispheres of the brain. You have the right side of the brain that, that uh, takes care of the left side of the body, and the left side controls the uh, left side of the brain controls the right side of the body. And so when you were doing two things on your right side, the reason it seems so impossible is because you overloaded the left side of the brain. You gave it two commands. So it was impossible, at least in a short amount of time. Now, if you worked at it and worked at it and worked at it, you could do it. But whenever you were doing one on the right, one on the left, it was no problem. Why? Because that was only one command per side of the brain. So we have to, we have to understand that so often the only reason we can't learn something is because in, in a short amount of time, our expectation levels are too great when we're trying to learn three things at a time. Two is the maximum. And so as I say today, I'm going to give you four or five things that have to do with this pitch shot. But I'm going to do this uh, at the... Um, <clears throat> You know, with, with the hope then that you will work on this, see the big picture and say, all right, I'm going to work on it one at a time and then two at a time. And you say, you know, I've got that now. Now I'm ready for part three to this while I've, I've etched into my neuromuscular pathways those, uh, those first two fundamentals. Now I'm ready for the third one. All right, so here's what it is. First thing, you've got to have your hands on there in a suitable manner. If you want soft, lofted pitch and your hands are over here on the right side of this golf club, then you can forget it. You're already, you've already defeated yourself, even though you may not know you have. What you've got to do is make sure that your thumbs are at least to the top of that club, if not a little bit over to the left. That's the first fundamental. Make sure your, left, your thumbs are in a little bit of a weaker position. All right, so now we've got loft because we've got our hands in a little softer position. That is, with our thumbs at least to the top, if not edging toward the left of the grip. The next thing is we're going to open this club face on the backswing. See, that's closed. If the length of the blade is pointed down, that's closed. You want this length of this blade up vertical. That's an open club face. And so, so far, so good. We have little weaker hands, a grip that is, a club face that we've opened. And how did we open it? We opened it with a pair of our uh, forearms that rotated in this direction. That opened the club face. Now, here's the deal. We've got to do what we can to maintain the loft that we now have on the club. And so, if I take this thing and I put it here and then shut it, well, I have... I may have had an open face for a moment, something that would be friendly for loft, but I lost it in the early stages of the downswing, so it can do me no good. I don't want to, with those same forearms that opened it, to then close it. Instead, what I want to do is allow the body to rotate. And so let's look at it from this angle. My hands are in a weak position. My face is open because I rotated my forearms open. I stay in this position and only square it with the body. So let's see how that looks. I've got my ball somewhere between my feet that aren't too far apart, probably on the left side. If, if you could draw a, a line right down the center of my stance, I probably want the ball slightly to the left, although some good players have, have uh, violated that, if you call that a fundamental. Open the face, square it with the body, and watch that ball jump straight up in the air. Now that ball went high, it was spinning, and when it landed it stopped pretty quickly. Now that's three things, and I said I have four or five. There's two little things that I want you to realize are snagging points, and those are these. Make sure your body rotates enough, because there's, there's a good chance that up to this point, 
you haven't rotated your body to such a degree that this shot requires. And so, and remember, your body's on constant alert to make up for any, what it detects as to be deficiencies. So if you don't turn your body enough, then your arms are going to square. They're going to take over the slack left by the turning body. So forget that. Make sure this right hip turns through the shot. And then the fifth thing, and this is, uh, this is as important as anything else, you've got to end up planted firmly on this left foot. There's just no other way to do it. You've got to get over there to the left, just like throwing a ball, just like casting a fishing pole. You, the individual in charge of the action, must go in the direction of the action. And so if you stay back here, which by the way, has a lot of intuitive appeal, that's the way people think in terms of getting the ball high, they'll stay back here, but you'll just be doomed to disappointment if you do. So again, hands in a weak position, forearms open the club, body squares it, make sure I rotate enough, and, and end up firmly on my left foot, and listen as the symphony begins. Now this is Bobby Steiner. I've enjoyed doing all these videos. I hope to see you all in person. Uh, some of you again, some of you for the first time, but uh, thanks for tuning in, and I know that will help you.